Millions of Canadians treasure memories of their childhood in Scouts. Once a Scout, always a Scout. The fundamental principles and values instilled in a young Scout are part of their success and ours worldwide. To continue on this path of success, we must adapt and build on the solid foundation we've built. Youth are different, so we are different. It keeps us current, keeps us on the right path. And if there's anything a Scout knows, it's the right path. The path led to an action plan, created to revitalize scouting across Canada. Through small changes in five, count them, five, key areas, we took a bold step in a new direction. First, we're making it easier for volunteers to join in on the fun. By dropping the registration fee and providing them with an official welcome package and e-learning resources, we have attracted more than 4,000 new volunteers. These lively minds have brought energy and passion to our programs. You can feel the power. Then, with input from alumni and opinion leaders, we built a new brand strategy to reflect the excitement that we all share for Scouts. With a combination of print, online, and social media, we're reintroducing ourselves to Canadians. And we're connecting with young people in a modern way. No waiting for them to come to us. We go to them by using the technology they know. Our traditional uniform needed an upgrade too. So we went fashion forward and swapped out old for new. Our fresh new look is practical and affordable, and it's distinctly Canadian. Then we decided to build MyScouts.ca. Its launch will create a hub that will buzz with information on all things Scouts. Online registration makes it easier for people to join. Members now have access to a wiki resource library full of training plans and jumpstart activities, and all of this will be supported by an improved help desk. MyScouts.ca is a platform that will transform how we do business and serve our members. Our camps are getting a facelift too. We're working hard to both improve our facilities and to make it easier for young people in Canada to get out and go camping. Our new summer programs offer the excitement of rock climbing, canoeing, competing in Survivor Man challenges, and more. We have become more engaged with members. We're encouraging everyone to take part in online forums and attend open town hall meetings to share their opinions. Also, all positions within our organization are now available for anyone to apply. Instead of simply choosing a successor, positions are filled by the best applicant for the job through an open process. After all, great people mean great results. Many changes have just begun, but we can already see the fantastic effects. 34 youth leadership courses ran in 2010. Over 8,500 volunteers have accessed our e-learning resource center. And just over 13,000 milestone recognition awards have been given out. And most importantly, for the first time since the 1970s, scouting in Canada has grown for three years in a row. As a result of our initiatives, we now have more youth involved in decision-making processes than ever before. Our goal is to have a continuous injection of new energy and talent at every level of Scouts Canada. We have been working to create a better age balance within the leadership of our organization. It's helping us to grow and become more relevant. We have also been visiting university campuses and community events to spread the word about what's happening at Scouts. We're in the news, we're on Facebook, and everything we do is accessible en français. We're telling the story of the difference we are making. Our Scouting Now Action Plan has been working to lead Scouts on the right path. We're back on track with today's changing youth in today's changing world. Scouts Canada is reaching new heights and gaining speed. Well into the future, Canadians will know that we're building generations of great leaders, capable, confident citizens who are well prepared for success in life. The Action Plan for Canadian Scouting has been the start of something great. It starts with Scouts. Once again, bienvenue à Terre-Neuve et Labrador. Welcome to Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada's youngest and coolest province. That's what you clap for that. I, we've, we've got lots of AV going on here today, but we couldn't afford an applause sign, so uh, you'll just have to improvise. 
A special welcome to those that are viewing this presentation online this morning from across Canada. We're here to present the final report on the Scouting Now action plan for Canadian scouting. Our microsite just went live at scoutingnow.ca where you can download not only the original plan but also our final report which will be distributed to the delegates here in just a moment, I believe. Thrilled to have you in Newfoundland Labrador. This is the very first time that our national conference has been held in this province and I'm so happy to have you all here. I volunteer with Scouts Canada for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is that I want to give back. Scouting taught me to challenge myself, to face obstacles, to work as part of a team, and to be responsive to the world around me. And without those experiences, I wouldn't be who I am today, I wouldn't be where I am today. For that reason, I am very passionate about this organization. I want to see it thrive and grow so that my children can have the same opportunities to learn about themselves and the world through scouting. Initiating Scouting Now, an action plan for Canadian scouting, and collaborating with scouts and volunteers across the country to bring it to fruition has been fueled by that desire, to foster changes that will let Scouts Canada meet the challenges facing us now and in the future. The work we've done on the action plan was a whole new experience, and with so many teams and individuals from all levels of Scouts Canada working together on a common set of clearly defined goals, the work itself has become emblematic of what Scouts is all about, and what we can achieve together. This new experience has been a defining one, both for Scouts Canada and for me. It brought to mind another defining experience that I had earlier in my scouting career at the Canadian Scout Jamboree in 1993. I was a venture scout at the time, and I had been fundraising on my own and as part of my venture company to go to the Jamboree. As it turns out, the other Adventurers were unable to go, fundraising efforts fell apart, and I was put on a waiting list to join another section. Luckily enough, I soon received a call from the council office, and I was informed that I could join a venture company from Gander, Newfoundland and Labrador, with a man named Doug Reed, who was the venture advisor, I didn't know that yet, on their trip to the Jamboree. So off I went, and it was huge. It was intimidating. I hadn't been on a plane before. I hadn't even been off the island of Newfoundland before, and now I was committing to spending two weeks with a group of people I didn't know doing all sorts of new things. And I did do new things. I walked on glaciers. I went mountain biking in the mountains, and I met people from all over the world. I realized what a big country this is, but at the same time, how small the world is. I found that just wearing this neckerchief meant that we all had a common bond, and it was truly eye-opening. And as great as the whole jamboree was, there was one particular adventure that really stuck with me. White water rafting. No waivers, all good. It was a challenge. It was an adventure, and it drove home the importance of everything that we had learned in scouting so far. So imagine the group of us piling into this raft to face the rapids on the Malign River. Except for our guide, none of us had ever done this before. We had to rely on previous scouting experience and trust in our team. We had to look out for each other. We had to communicate as effectively as possible. And we had to be proactive in dealing with new situations. We had to have full confidence in our team. And everyone had to do their part. Things happened fast on the river. And two of us, including me, fell out of the raft and had to be hauled back in. Our scouting experiences were key in helping our group work together effectively and in keeping me from drowning in the Malign River. Despite the challenges, we were able to take command of the rapids and forge ahead because of our commitment to the goal and our trust in each other. Working on the Scouting Now action plan has been much the same way. We have faced a lot of bumps, and we've had to help some people back into the boat. But we haven't lost focus of what we're trying to accomplish. Just as our scouting experiences helped my Whitewater team back in 1993, our scouting experiences have helped the Action Plan team, this team, since 2009. With the hard work of scouters like Doug Reed, who has been part of both of these adventures, we have been able to stay afloat and keep moving in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all in Scouts for Adventure and to have fun. And while it can be easy to get caught up in the details of the Scouting Now Action Plan that we developed in 2009, its main purpose was to make it easier for everyone to have fun and to go on adventures. A call to action was set before us. 
We must set out to find new members, new and old. Show them the benefits of a life that includes scouting. Welcome them to a circle of peers and teach them many different skills. Guide them through new territory and help them survive in this quick-paced and ever-changing world. A scout has taught search and survival skills from the very beginning. So when the call came, we knew exactly how to respond. First, a search mission would have to be organized to retrieve these past and future scouts, and then we must assist them in preparing for their futures. So, two short years ago, the action plan was set in motion. The scout's motto is be prepared, so we planned ahead to ensure the success of this mission. We prepared our packs with the right tools. In a traditional search operation, we would bring things like maps and guides and compasses and first aid supplies, but this mission was going to call for a very, very different toolkit. The making it easier for new and, volunteer, new and current volunteers toolkit. So with the goal of making it easier for our volunteers to get the orientation they need to feel comfortable and confident in their role as a leader, and the training they need to deliver the Scouts program effectively, we have developed and successfully launched an online training program. We launched Wood Badge Online for all five sections. We developed syllabi for the online course, including reading, video, and interactive elements, and we offered it to our members. Scouter training was supplemented by online training videos and a Scout Wiki. Our email help desk was established in 2010. We launched an online forum, talkscouts.ca, to promote peer staff support for scouters. One of the biggest challenges facing our current volunteers is finding time to accomplish the things they want to do. In response to that challenge, we have developed a prepared program calendar that provides them with a year of activities, broken down by meeting, and matched with badge requirements where applicable. They can also access any of a series of jump starts, a program segment covering a single topic that can be inserted into the program year as desired. Leaders can also obtain information and activities from our new Scout Wiki page. The program calendar is online with an entire year of great programming. 107, including 48 new program jump starts, are now available online at no cost to leaders. These include Beaver Scout jump starts, Cub Scout jump starts, focusing on Aboriginal education as well. We have developed the fast and flex leadership training for youth, both to enhance their leadership skills and to ensure effective use of Sixers councils and courts of honor. When a new leader joins scouting, they have a steep learning curve. Most of us in the room and most people watching online have experienced that themselves. They plan programs. They, they learn to lead a large number of youth at once. They learn how leadership within scouting is structured, what policies apply to them, how to get the information that they need, how to access training, and in general, how to do their job effectively. So to help them succeed, we created a welcome kit comprised of a booklet and a microsite that includes a contact list, access to resources like the Jumpstart programs, a commissioner's video, the outdoor activity guide, the brand manual, and all kinds of FAQs. I'm pleased to say in the last two years, we have now printed and distributed almost 25,000 new Scouter Welcome Kits. 80% of new volunteers surveyed in the past year said that the kit was a useful orientation tool. We also built a Jumpstart to Growth Kit to help new groups recruit members and leaders. The kit includes information on running a registration night, bring a friend night, and other recruitment activities. This kit is also now fully online. The online version of this Jumpstart includes step-by-step -step plans for people who wish to create a new group and for organizations that would like to use scouting as their youth program. We're also creating a database of resource people that will allow volunteers to have direct contact with experts that they seek to run their program. The resource people database will allow people to make targeted requests rather than asking questions to a general scouter population. Our Chinook Council in Alberta has made their own inroads with this action step by creating the Bridge Builders Club, a way to, for former scouters to stay in touch and act as resource people for nearby groups. On to action item 1.6, and I believe you now have, to, uh, you have the reports in front of you. When you hear the chimes ring, you'll know it's time to turn the page. It's a generational thing. Some people may get that, some people may not. Obviously, most did not. I'll stick to the script. Outdoor <laughs> activities, especially camping, are such a vital component of the design of the scouting program. And it's crucial to ensure that our camp properties are accessible and easy to use. In order to meet that challenge, we created a camping strategy to be undertaken in at least two phases. Phase one is complete, and it did involve two major pieces of work. 
The first stage of phase one was to examine best practices of three outdoor focused organizations, including two leading scout associations, the UK Scout Association, Boy Scouts of America, and the YMCA. And we determined what tips we could take from their models. This led to recommendations that Scouts Canada create an outdoor program team of volunteers and professional staff, and that we create four categories of campsites to provide camping experiences for our members. The second part of phase one involves surveying the membership to assess their needs, conducting surveys about camp experiences to determine how camping is currently incorporated in the program and to how they use scout pro properties currently to accomplish that. I want to tell you today that I remain deeply committed to the vision that we can and we will build amazing outdoor adventure centers in every single council across Canada. It can be done. And we're now ready to work with councils and with scouters across the country to make this dream a reality. I firmly believe that every child in this country deserves an opportunity to go camping. And we have the ability to make that happen, and we should. We're attempting to remove barriers to participation by examining our facilities for physical barriers that prevent people with varying abilities from participating in activities, and also ensuring that cultural traditions are respected, and trying to remove stereotypes that might prove to be an obstacle for someone. We've also sought solutions to other sorts of barriers. Let me give you a list of some of the successes we've had to date in terms of re removing barriers. We've redesigned our uniform. We've instituted a public appointments process. We've instituted e-learning, myscouts.ca and talkscouts.ca, the BPMP quick reference guides, an improved screening process for our volunteers, two national leadership summits in 2009 and 2011, prepare programming resources, increase funding for no one left behind, new program quality awards, a new servicing model, outreach programs, simplified waivers, new recognition programs, leader handbooks and badge requirements are now finally online. We've launched a jumpstart to growth, bilingual materials, we've reduced age restrictions for wood badge training, we've instituted a badge recording and tracking program, we've eliminated leader registration fees, and there are other examples. You're to be congratulated for breaking down all those barriers, but we must keep going. Since the action plan for Canadian scouting was introduced, the Board of Governors has approved the elimination of the national, leadership, national leader fee, and the bulk of the cost has been absorbed on a national level. In addition to the elimination of this fee, 18 of our 20 councils were able to eliminate their leader fees as well, and the remaining two will do so by next fall. With the toolkit packed and ready to go, our next course of action was to establish clear lines of communication within the group. Conventional forms of communication used on a search mission would be two-way radios for correspondence, flare guns for warnings, which are not permitted inside this hotel, orienta orienteering symbols to prevent search areas from overlapping. But under these circumstances, those mediums would obviously not properly communicate our message. The message, enhancing our image, our profile, and our expertise. Members of the net generation, members of this digital generation, want to access their information online, and they want to participate in its creation. To attract young people to our organization, we need to have a savvy online presence. Our site has to be interactive, entertaining, and intuitive to attract new visitors, and it has to be informative and useful in order to reach all our members equally and to disseminate information effectively. Our new website, which launched in September, and the association management system, myscouts.ca, which will launch early in 2012, will achieve all of this. Our new website was designed based on what our members, the public, and youth in general are looking for in a website. We've divided, we've divided the implementation into phases, with phase one launched in September. Later phases are going to include blogs, more video, and more opportunities for interaction. The action plan also recommended the creation of a password-protected commissioner-leader intranet using the Greater Toronto Council's proposed Commissioner's e-handbook as a starting point. This will be fully realized in a later phase of website development as part of myscouts.ca, the members-only companion site to scouts.ca. We've developed a number of videos to promote scouting, including three PSAs and a video to camp supporters. These are available through our YouTube channel and our brand center, and they can be used by any member. We also recognize the need for mobile sites identified in the action plan. Developing our main site and myscouts.ca was the top priority, so mobile sites will follow in the next year or so. Through a partnership with outdoorsman and videographer Kevin Callan, 
We have camping how-to videos available through his website, which demonstrate camping skills and challenges in a clear and entertaining manner. As recommended in the Scouting Now plan, we have revamped our social media strategy, and Twitter is buzzing with hashtag SCEdge2011, all the activities that are taking place this weekend. We now have a social media strategy, and we've engaged volunteers to fulfill it. We have moved from a group to a fan page on Facebook in order to uh, communicate more effectively with members, and we retweet uh, tweet information on a regular basis to interact with our followers there. There's already a well-designed online badge tracking tool that allows individuals and groups to track their badge process. We will soon add this to our web package, and it's on display here in our area outside the meeting room this morning. The Scout Wiki has been a highly successful part of our web development strategy. This online tool allows our members and the general public to share resources and information about scouting and add and edit articles as desired. Hello. Shot and produced right here in Newfoundland and Labrador. <laughs> With some Cubs and Scouts from Mount Pearl, I might add. Yeah. So. When, when we restarted the pack, I was in Akela for a brief period of time. And there's much more skilled and capable Akela in place now with a great leadership team and some great young people. As a youth organization, it is vital that Scouts Canada create programs and marketing based on information, not on assumptions. Given the sheer volume of choices available to youth today, an organization that appears not to value youth opinion and input will be dismissed as irrelevant, regardless of the value of its programs. For that reason, we are interested in keeping up with trends in youth culture and responding to them. Ideally, we will use the results of our research to drive a dialogue with parents and with the media about youth issues and how they can be addressed effectively. This will increase our credibility with the general public and establish us once again as the go-to source for informed discussions about youth issues. Our next stage is to determine how we want to proceed with the information gathered in the environmental scan and we will complete this work in, in the months ahead. Some other progress though in this area in terms of youth research and advocacy that's worth noting. We've hired a director of outreach and youth leadership Rob is here this weekend somewhere. Wave, Rob. There he is. We're going to get him a red shirt soon as well. Uh, applause for that, really? <laughs> and this will really help us ensure that our programming meets the needs of youth. We've completed a youth survey and a retention survey. These surveys identified that while our program does not require major, major changes, we really should emphasize our outdoor programs. We need to get kids outdoors, and we need to update how our programs are being delivered, as we heard about in a session earlier this morning. While in many ways our uniform back in 2009 was iconic, with echoes back to the original days of scouting, it was not stylish, it was not cool, and it was not practical. The Scouting Now Action Plan recommended an update, so we created a partnership with Joe Fresh, to make our uniforms into clothing that was likely to be worn even outside of scouting activities. This redesign was a great success, creating a truly updated style that is practical, attractive, and cool. The redesign got scouts talking to each other about their preferences. It raised the profile of our organization in general, and it generated huge media coverage. 36 print outlets, including the National Post, the Canadian Press. We had 34 radio hits, 13 television segments, and over 30 online postings. We're also encouraging people to use the friendship knot, I saw a few people wearing it today, as a casual alternative to the woggle. As a not-for-profit organization, it is vitally important that we cultivate good relationships with the federal government, and I know Senator Danino, a, a fellow scout, is among us this morning, and also with the various provincial and territorial governments. We've created a new development team to create a sponsorship strategy and generally improve our efforts in this area. It's been many achievements, some, but some of the specific ones I'd like to highlight. The development team is creating a calendar of regularly scheduled public funding opportunities that Scouts Canada can apply for, with the intention of continually updating that calendar as funding programs start or end. 
In October 2010, we were involved in the World Scout Foundation Baden-Powell Fellowship event held in Ottawa, which raised over $400,000 for the World Scout Foundation and provided incredible networking opportunities. That was made possible by a past president of Scouts Canada, Mr. David Hustis, who is also with us this morning. In the last year, I met with Governor General David Johnson and with Prime Minister Stephen Harper to help foster the relationship between Scouting and the Government of Canada. In 2012, we will launch a Friends of Scouting and Parliament initiative, and we will have a Scouts Day on Parliament Hill, an event which will be combined with a government relations plan involving visits with MPs and provincial politicians as well. Donor levels and plan giving are being aligned under a common banner so, we that, so that we can provide common recognition, consistent recognition for future funders. On to item 2.5 in our plan. See, we're moving right along. While it was once possible for an organization to attract new members and keep themselves top of mind with occasional advertising and reliance on friends of friends, that's definitely no longer feasible. To make full use of our new brand strategy, developed in partnership with the award-winning agency Target, we implemented an advertising strategy based on showing how scouting leads to great things. It starts with scouts. It included a series of ads and advertorials in the Globe and Mail and a series of PSAs, like the one we're going to show you right now. launched an online brand center where groups can easily order branded materials that will help them promote local activities while benefiting from the larger profile raising campaign. We initiated the Good Turn for Canada campaign. Are there any members of the National Youth Network in the audience today? Yes. And a few are sporting some snazzy new blue uniforms, I might add. Nice to see. Members were given a wristband, and when they did a good turn, they would pass it on by giving their bracelet to the good turn recipient so they couldn't turn, help someone else, and pass it along the band. Each band was printed with a number to text details of your good turn. This has resulted in 45,000 good turns being reported. And based on the success thus far, we have budgeted for 200,000 bands for the 2012 campaign. We also launched the National Group Media Challenge, offering a camp chair to groups who get a story in their local newspaper or on their local radio or television channel and uh, secure placement of one of our print or digital PSAs. I'm a great supporter of Action Item 2.4, which is working with the government and other funders. This is because I see great benefits to more centralized fundraising efforts. For example, my crew, was able to secure a community grant from Coast Capital Savings last year, which subsidized most of our operational costs. As a result, we could spend more time planning program activities as opposed to one-off fundraisers. I see many other groups benefiting from this action item as well, because the less time we have to spend raising money, the more time we can spend having fun. What I like about the action plan is the new uniform. Not only do we now have a uniform that has women's sizing, so a uniform that fits me better, but we also have a uniform that's made of a better material. Now I'm enjoying my beer meetings, running around with my kids, and not feeling like this uniform is sticking to me. It's a lot better, and I really enjoy it. And I've seen huge value in the new website and the online program tools. We've got the wiki, the Talk Scouts forum, and for your, all those new leaders, we've got the wood badge online for you to take for all five of our sections. There's even training videos online to go with that. Now to help our frontline leaders every week to week, a lot of program tools are there. The leader handbook is online for you, all of them. We've got the program builder with thousands of ideas to, uh, to shop and squ uh, share. We've got the program jump kits, which you all love, are now online as well. We've got the interactive program calendars, which I've seen a lot of local new leaders have been using a lot of value from, with a full gear a full meeting plan set out for you. Additionally, we've got the social media teams, which have been activated and productive in four social networks now. All of these there have been there to help all of us frontline leaders add the program that the kids deserve. A 
A key strategy in successful search operations is to divide volunteers into several independent search units who will work together as a team, but cover a more area than they would if they traversed in one large group. However, the division should not be formed randomly. Each person has a special skill set, and diversity among skills is vital to a unit. For example, there should be at least one individual with first aid training, another in charge of intergroup communication, and someone with impeccable leadership skills to guide the unit. When organizing all of our volunteers into smaller units for this particular mission, we turned the decision-making power over to them. Leaders stepped forward, and their volunteers followed. One immediate way we have improved our transparency is through adopting a public appointments process that encourages all members to apply for all positions. The public appointments process casts a wide net while giving a feeling of openness and willingness. The process itself conveys our new culture of being open to fresh ideas when positions are advertised. The success of this action step is obvious in the quality and quantity of new appointments since 2009, including many of the leaders that are, that are before us in the room this morning. Through the public appointments process, we found eight new national leadership team members, 14 council commissioners, 13 council youth commissioners, and members of multiple working groups. Part of engaging our volunteers is making room for them to join the decision-making process, to contribute to policy, to give feedback, and to make suggestions. Ensuring that everyone has a voice in our organization is a key step to ensuring that we continue to grow and be responsive to the needs of members and the needs of society as a whole. To meet the challenge of including a diversity of viewpoints, we have explored a variety of ways to make Scouts Canada more democratic. We have a ways to go, but we are making meaningful progress. We're exploring ways to create an online election process, and we intend to implement it in 2012. Our AGM is now online, so more members can observe the proceedings, hear differing viewpoints, and understand how decisions are made. In 2009, our leadership summit to launch the action plan pulled together the key threes from each council, as well as staff and the Board of Governors, ensuring that as many people as possible could be part of initially bringing the plan to life. In March 2011, we held a second National Leadership Summit on volunteer support to demonstrate and reinforce the developments in this area since the action plan was initiated. In 2010, we invited new volunteers to participate in a survey about their first 90 days in scouting. 642 respondents gave us valuable information on the strengths and weaknesses of our support for new volunteers. I'm now going to move along to item 3.3 in our action plan. In order to ensure that our bylaws, policies, and procedures are serving the needs of our organization, rather than creating unnecessary barriers to participation for, for leaders and for youth, we've developed a system to review our bylaws, policies, and procedures twice each year. All volunteers and staff within our organization want to do the best possible job. And we want to make sure that their role and responsibilities are really clear. The most effective way to do this is through the creation of a performance management system. At present, the system is under development, and it's going to become part of the new MyScouts.ca site when it launches as well. As a result of the action plan, we will be realigning staff responsibilities to refocus the role of our valuable council field executives. With the change in responsibilities, council field executives will now have growth and retention as their primary tasks and primary goals, and many of the administrative tasks will be redistributed to other people. We have hired a full-time translator, and virtually all of our communications are released in both official languages simultaneously, including updates on handbooks and support materials. In an effort to work more closely with l'Association des Scouts du Canada, we held the first ever National Scout Conference in November 2010, and together we jointly received an $80,000 grant from Loblaws for environmental projects. Our program quality awards were launched in March of this year, and over 50 were distributed, and more will be presented very soon when all groups have submitted their paperwork. We've developed the Milestone Recognition Program that allows us to recognize more volunteers on a regular basis. And in the spring of this year, for the first time ever in the organization's history, we distributed 13,000 awards to volunteers with less than five years of service. Thank you.
the process I'll be speaking about how it's helped me as a youth commissioner to appoint other uh, area youth commissioners and the like guys. So really, so really now with the guidelines there's uh, full steps to really help promote a wide, a wide search for uh, for candidates. So instead of just pinpointing one person and, and, and asking them, we really have it an open call as well as pinpointing those same people who we think would excel at that position. Really the public appointment process uh, coming from uh, nationals really helped uh, help the process for volunteers like myself to choose other youth and as well as the adults for choosing other adult uh, commissioners to excel at their uh, positions and moving Scouts Canada uh, forward into the future. The quality awards are a great motivator to encourage underperforming sections to do their best. I think it's particularly important that all sections should be held to the same standards to ensure quality of program, as well as fun, challenging, and outdoor-based elements to make sure they're available for all youth. So I'm glad that the quality awards have been extended across the country. As a member of a fairly active rubber crew for the last couple of years, quality awards gave our crew something to shoot for. Rovers don't typically have much of a framework to play with, but having specific targets in mind gave our crew the ability to measure us to a standard. I'll now move along to the fourth action area of the Scouting Now plan. This mission was critical, so we needed all hands on deck, which meant enlisting the help of more youth members. Our youth members have been receiving the proper training for years now, but this mission was the real deal. A test of sorts, and one that they completed diligently and with great success. As a result, these youth members grew together, but as individuals, helping to find others would benefit from these same survival skills. The key to success? Achieving meaningful youth involvement. While youth commissioners are part of our Area Key 3, their roles have not always been clear, aside from providing a youth presence on the area level. This action area and this action plan challenged us to develop a clear role for these key volunteers. One of the first glimpses of youth leadership many of our younger members will see, and we needed to provide these AYCs with a set of tools and action steps to fulfill that role. The National Youth Network developed the Youth Commissioner Toolkit, a kit that both trains new youth commissioners and provides a means for established youth commissioners to do their jobs effectively. The toolkit was launched at the Leadership Summit in March 2011, where over 100 youth representatives received the toolkit and learned how to use it effectively to do their jobs. The toolkit gives youth commissioners a tangible code of practice and makes their roles within the area very, very clear, enabling the key three to operate more effectively. The kit will help support area youth commissioners to provide focus training in their area. It also demonstrates how to assist at the group level, how to ensure meaningful youth participation in sixes, patrols, courts of honor and venture executives, and how to oversee the appointment of Kims and Kios for each section. The Youth Commissioner Toolkit can be accessed on our website. Scouting is a movement founded on creating youth leaders, so it is important that our activities be youth driven, and that even our youngest members can learn through example that youth are powerful, uh, powerful and capable. If you try and say powerful and capable at the same time, it doesn't come out very well. Furthermore, since our youngest members will automatically look up to older youth members, visiting, viewing them as cool and wanting to emulate them, having a strong contingent of youth leaders is vital for keeping members engaged in the program. Since the development of the action plan, we have been conscious of the need to directly recruit younger people into key roles in our leadership structure, and we've made a concerted effort to do so. This effort has helped us to reinforce the fact that scouting is an open organization with important positions available to anyone who is qualified, rather than limited to a chosen few who have paid their dues by long-term commitment. Our accomplishment on this action plan point are as follows. Here are just a few highlights. The average age of the Board of Governors is now 40, down from 51. The youngest ever officer of the corporation, the first youth member ever to be elected as an officer of the corporation, was elected at age 24. The nominating committee for the Board of Governors requires one youth, but two were elected and two were appointed in 2009-2010. Two were appointed and one was elected in 2010-2011. More young people than ever are in currently involved in roles that were consider previously considered adult positions. For instance, for the National Adventure event, Adventure 2012, the event chair, the administration manager, and the special events manager are all under 35. Slightly over 10% of our group commissioners, area commissioners, and service teams 
are under age 35, meeting the goal that nobody said we could reach that was established in the action plan for 2011. We are on track to meet our goal of 20% of people in these positions to be under 35 by 2015. <clears throat> Almost one third of our council youth commissioners are 18 or under, and in 2010, the mean age of our area youth commissioners was 17.4, which we could probably call 17 and a half. So we are on track to have all youth commissioners and youth representatives under the age of 18 by 2015. Another key step in reclaiming our position as the leading youth organization in this country is ensuring that the face of our organization is a youthful one. When the person speaking on behalf of scouting is young, then the branding of it starts with scouts is reinforced visually as well as by the message uh, the youth members themselves are delivering. For those reasons, we have developed a youth spokesperson program modeled after a similar program in the UK Scout Association that has been incredibly successful. These youth spokespeople will represent Scouts Canada in the media and at large speaking engagements. The youth spokesperson program will allow young people to represent our organization in the media and at large speaking engagements. I believe I just said that. <laughs> By training these young people, both they and our organization benefit as the young people learn valuable skills and our organization is seen as the youth leadership development organization that we truly are. The first youth spokesperson program set training session was held in the spring of 2010 and 40 youth across the country were trained to represent Scouts Canada in the public eye. At present, 18 of these youth spokespeople are active, and they have played a role in the 2011 Globe and Mail editorials, the launch of the new uniform, and in ongoing media relations. The next update to the focus training materials will include uh, training for the youth, sp youth spokesperson program. Two of the original founding members, two of the people that designed this focus training program are, are in the room this morning. Natalie Benson, Brian Taylor, good to have you here, and it's good to, be, it's good to see that focus is still alive and, and well and training the next generation of youth leaders. Since the future will depend on leaders who can work with people of other cultures and nationalities, we must train our youth to work with this reality. It is vital that the youth we are training today have the earliest possible opportunities to meet and work with people from all over the world, to learn how to assist people in countries that need support, and discover how to find commonalities among diverse cultures. We must train our youth leaders to celebrate diversity rather than be challenged by it. In the interest of developing this aspect of our program and in keeping with our goal of providing meaningful youth experiences, we have increased our focus on finding international opportunities for our youth and supporting them in their goal to be involved in the global community. We now have a representative on the Inter-American Scout Committee once again. We've restructured our international committee our first ever composite group traveled to Africa in August 2010 to work on an international aid project. The youngest ever contingent from Scouts Canada attended the Inter-American Scout Conference in Panama in August 2010 and the World Scout Conference in Brazil in January 2011. We have worked with the me to we organization on international service projects, sending Scouts to Ecuador in August of this year to help build schools and to take part in cultural activities. A number of our youth members worked on a joint bid committee with Boy Scouts of America and the Scout Association of Mexico to bid on the 2019 World Scout Jamboree. Ladies and gentlemen, we were successful. <laughs> the youth members on the bid committee presented the bid to the World Scout Conference. It will be the first World Jamboree jointly hosted by the three Scout Associations. And just this year, we sent almost 400 members of Scouts Canada and L'Association des Scouts de Canada to the World Scout Jamboree in Sweden in August. We raised $100,000 for Haiti after the earthquake in January of last year. Our international involvement will continue to grow. One of the chief benefits for youth in scouting is the development of leadership skills. 
In the past, these skills were mostly acquired in a general way through the program and supplemented with leadership training like FOCUS aimed primarily at older sections. The action plan identified the need to create additional leadership training programs for younger members in Cubs and Scouts and to ensure that there were a well-designed set of training guidelines for each program. In 2010, the National Youth Network began developing training to meet the needs identified in the action plan, and the result was the FAST, Fun Active Scout Training for Scouts, and the FLEX, Fun Leadership Experience Programs aimed at Cub Scouts. In addition to these new training sessions, we have offered 25 focus courses in the past year. It is our goal to ensure that focus sessions are offered annually by each and every council in Canada. In 2012, I'm pleased to announce that we will host a National Youth Leadership Conference. Hi, I'm Mikita. I'm a youth spokesperson with Scouts Canada. And what I basically do is do interviews with television stations like CTV's Breakfast Television and talk to them about scouting. After being a spokesperson for a year now, I found it very, very interesting and eye-opening. I felt really fortunate to be able to open the eyes of many people about scouting since a lot of them actually don't know that girls are allowed to be in scouting. And I've been able to break their barriers and stereotypes of scouts and show them that we are um, a prominent organization in Canada. In Greater Victoria area, we have recently expanded our service team to, to be 32 members, eight of which are 35 and under. We brought in DAC sections to better uh, to better support, manage, and create events and programs for youth. And some of those wonderful ideas have already started to take shape. One is Camp Coyote. It's a new high adventure social camp for rovers and venturers. I want to be able to have venturers help out in my section as, as scouters in training. Through youth leadership development, I want to encourage the mentors to show more initiative in organizing cup programs. We try to give men to the mentors to make them more interested in leadership programs offered in scouting, as well to encourage them to remain in scouting in future years. And now for the final area of our action plan. It took all of our skills combined, along with precise timing and a plan, but we managed to locate many of our lost and future members. Unfortunately, some were harder to reach than others, prompting us to think quickly and be innovative in our endeavors. As a result, we not only discovered the members we sought out after, but also new me methods of finding and connecting with those potential members once considered unreachable. Reaching our goal, recruiting members, finding new volunteers. Outreach teams are intended to provide an exciting introduction to scouting for people in various community settings. These teams will provide hands-on scouting experiences for people on university campuses, at community events and at recruitment fairs. The model has been piloted by the Pacific Coast Council Rover Crew, who have taken responsibility for developing this initiative across the country, and I might add members of the 180th Pacific Coast Crew are also responsible for developing these wonderful testimonial videos that you see today. Six events have taken place across Canada. The Riverton Rover Crew in New Brunswick held an invitational camp where young people could experience the scouting program before joining. This camp attracted 81 applicants, of which 36 were chosen to attend. Before the action plan, all of our partnerships were not at peak strength. We made partnership development and renewal a priority, discovering new ways to offer the scouting program to different groups, and new ways to incorporate fresh ideas into our program. One of our first steps in strengthening our connection to our partners and sponsors was to show our appreciation. We accomplished this with a certificate and a video, which has been used at banquets and sponsor events across the country since February 2010. We are meeting with many organizations to renew past partnerships and also to explore new ones. Extension Scouts is a way for us to reach non-traditional groups with the scouting program and help at-risk youth at the same time. This could take the form of drop-in centers, retreats, or longer-term programs. We've investigated a number of other organizations that offer similar types of programs, and we've made recommendations, including careful consideration of the timing of the pilot phase and deciding between whether to adapt the current Scouts About program to meet the needs of marginalized youth, an approach that creates immediate growth, or to partner with existing organizations to tailor a program for an identified popula population of marginalized youth, an approach that will be more sustainable and meets our goal of re-establishing Scouts as a service organization that truly responds to the needs of the community. 
Scouting alumni, both youth and adult, are an untapped source of potential members and volunteers, but many are unable to attend regular meetings or commit a lot of time. The action plan challenged us to develop a plan for these former members, which would allow them to maintain a connection of their choice to scouting. Over the course of the last 12 months, two separate teams of volunteers developed approaches to re-engage former members and to keep current youth members in the scouting movement. The active alumni program and the youth network program are results of these efforts. We want to let the Scouts Canada adult alumni know, and there are millions of them in this country, that they have volunteer opportunities that are more suited to their current availability. So we've developed a virtual vehicle to offer them those possibilities. This new alumni program will launch in the next year. Former youth members interested in maintaining a connection with scouting, but not ready to join Rover Scouts, can take part in scouting activities, either as a volunteer to a section, or engaging with other young people in traditional scouting pursuits. This network is planned to launch in 2012. We have also strengthened our relationship with the Canadian Fellowship of BP Guilds. While Scouts Canada has traditionally operated on a single model for groups, our observation of groups in other scout organizations, and in organizations outside of scouting, led us to investigate other ways of delivering scouting programs that meet our standards and meet the needs of the community at the same time. This is a largely unexplored area for growth. The investigation of new group models report includes the following recommendations. Pursuing, encouraging, and actively supporting young adult-led groups as an integral part of, uh, as, an inter as an integral group model. Forming mutually beneficial and strategic partnerships with other organizations to foster new group models. Encouraging innovation and supporting ideas and initiatives of Scouts Canada volunteers, especially in the areas of membership growth. Pursuing more vocational groups, EMS, police, etc., for senior youth sections, and to have this implemented as a council initiative. Formalizing a scouter and training program as part of the core venturer programming. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, friends in scouting, for the past two years, we have all been on an amazing adventure together. When we started the action plan in 2009, we were an organization living out a legacy. With the work we've done since then, we've created our own legacy. It would be easy for us to dismiss our efforts as all in a day's work, as volunteers and staff in this organization often do. But that would not acknowledge the scale or the scope of what we have accomplished. In two short years, we've turned Scouts Canada from an easily ignored, slow-moving, old-fashioned organization to a fast-flowing, attractive, energetic movement that embodies the spirit of the youth that drive everything we do. We have engaged our partners, our board, our staff, our national leadership team, our councils, the youth, and their parents, and members of all kinds to join us as we change course and create an organization that can keep growing and responding to the needs of our world. We have found ways to support our volunteers so they have a great scouting experience in which they receive almost as much as they give. Those scouters will automatically turn that experience into great scouting adventures for our youth, ensuring that the cycle continues. We've created a new brand that speaks to the needs of today's youth, and we found lots of ways to let them know about it. We've made Scouts Canada into an organization that can compete for families' precious time and make it worth their while. We've brought, for the first time perhaps ever, we've brought our entire organization onto a single plan with a single focus to support leaders to deliver a fantastic program. Everything that every staff member and every volunteer does supports that idea, and we're ready to meet any challenges that we encounter in delivering on that promise. We've created new ways for youth to get more out of scouting. We're involving youth at every level, and we're training them well. We're giving them new opportunities to represent scouting at home and all around the world. More than ever, we're helping them be prepared to take on leadership roles in their lives and in our society. And we have decided not to be satisfied with our traditional ways of finding and keeping members. We're reaching out to new groups and new partners each and every day. We're finding ways to meet the needs of youth who are at risk and youth who are just busy. We're working to keep them connected to scouting because we need them and because they need us. In 2009, the Scouting Now Action Plan challenged us, challenged all of us, to make scouting better. I'm pleased to report to the membership that we have risen to that challenge and we continue to rise to it. 2011 finds us both focused and responsive with structures in place to help us to continue to grow and continue to evolve with the young people we serve. And I am pleased to report that for the first time since the 1970s, scouting in Canada has grown for three years in a row. Our efforts, your efforts, are making a difference. Thanks to your hard work, Scouts Canada has once again taken its rightful place as the leading organization for youth in our nation. Right now, I would like to thank each and every one of you and each and every scouter across the country for helping us bring that dream to life. Today, we celebrate our accomplishments. Tomorrow, we get back to work to take Scouts Canada even higher. Scouting now for all of us was a call to action. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, we have answered that call, and we have reversed our trend of declining membership. With a re-energized brand, and as an organization that shapes future leaders, we cannot allow ourselves to stag stagnate ever again. It is up to us to keep responding to the needs of youth and to change as those needs change. Our fundamental values and the scout method will always remain the same, no matter how our delivery methods and external appearance might change. And if we remain conscious of that, we can stay relevant and we can be a vital organization, a vital organization like we are today. The Scouting Now Action Plan Report being released this morning is an important record of the hard work we have undertaken over the past two years and the tremendous results of that work. But folks, we're not out of the woods yet. Many of the items completed in this report are only stage one of a long, exciting process of creating our vision for the future of scouting in Canada. Included in that document is also a list of follow-up steps to ensure the continued success of this mission. We can make that vision come true if we continue to work together for change and for scouting. 
Thank you so much for your attention and for your continued commitment to achieving our mission. Good scouting. Amazingly, we're slightly ahead of schedule, so I'm going to ask our talented crew on the right to bring up the lights a little bit, and I would be happy to entertain a few questions and comments on, on what you've seen here this morning. Andrew? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, Steve, uh, I think I can speak for a lot of us in the room today that uh, the passion that you have for scouting is uh, absolutely infectious. Uh, the drive for growth and, and your commitment to bringing scouting to more youth each and every day is just uh, unbelievable. Your ability to inspire those of us in this room to rise to that challenge and certainly join you on the journey over the last couple of years is exemplary and uh, that those of us here today definitely are a testament and what you've shared, shared with us in terms of the achievements are a testament to that leadership. Uh, it is, has been quite a journey that we've all been on together, as you've pointed out through your presentation. And you certainly uh, know that I have a passion for making sure that people are appreciated for what they do. And I'd, I'd like to ask everybody to be upstanding again and show our appreciation for the Chief Commissioner, Steve Kent, and the leadership he's provided to this organization. Steve, on, on behalf of uh, the Right Honourable David Johnson, the Patron Scout of Canada, gives me great pleasure to present you with the Silver Wolf. until they let Ben on stage. <laughs> he's, he's not an MMS, despite the fact that he has the vest on, so don't anybody uh, panic. Let me wipe my face first. <laughs> Tim, you have caused me to shed a few tears. <laughs> This is Ben, who most of you have met. This is Karen, the new addition. And Janet, who's better known in Mount Pearl as Rainbow. Hey, Ben. Smile, buddy. <laughs> Do you like beavers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, did you go swimming today? Yeah. Yeah? Was it fun? Thank you. 
thank you. Uh, I am so deeply and profoundly proud of this team. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate the recognition, but the, the people that deserve it are the people in this room and the people across the nation who've, who've brought this work to life. And uh, I really believe we're better positioned than ever before to, to reach out to more Canadian youth. And that, that is my only ask of you as we, as we close this presentation. Um, we now have all the elements. We have laid the foundation for growth. And despite the challenges and despite the skeptics and despite the external forces that will continue to challenge us along this path, we, uh, we have an obligation to tell our story of the difference that we're making in the lives of Canadian young people. And we have to do that together. I am so grateful um, for the work that each and every one of you have done and uh, the work that you continue to do to bring our programs to more kids in this country. And I can assure you as I enter the, the final months of my mandate, I will continue to do whatever I can to help you succeed. And I am so, so proud of what you've accomplished over the last two years. Thanks so much. I'm, uh, um, thank you. Questions? <laughs> or are we now out of time? <coughs> Hearing none, we will uh, break early for lunch. I would like to thank those that have been joining us on the webcast. And I'd invite everybody back to the webcast at 11.30 Eastern Time, 1 p.m. here in Newfoundland, Labrador. We have a time zone all our own. Uh, for the annual general meeting of, of Scouts Canada. Um, I'd ask the uh, council commissioners to convene right away for that picture if possible while we're all still together. So before you run off, if we're, I'm not sure where we're meeting. Does anybody know? C. Salon C. So it's just, uh, just next door here. I'd ask you if you could convene, uh, convene right away. And um, I'd actually ask that the, um, if they're available, if the council executive directors could join us for a moment as well, um, I'd just like to, to talk to you about an issue as we prepare for this afternoon's proceedings. Thank you all so much. It's been a great morning, and I look forward to the sessions this afternoon. Enjoy your lunch.